in this video, we're going to be talking about Amazon FBA. Uh, so basically, um, Amazon FBA or fulfillment by Amazon is a an e-commerce e uh, business model, um, and basically, it works where you source a bunch of products and you ship them to or have them shipped to the country that it, you wish to sell in. Um, and it can be anywhere in the world, wherever your market is. Um, when I've done it in the past, I've done it with the US as it's you know, a relatively big market. Um, and then what happens is once you ship your products there, a, a bit of a process involved. When you ship your products to a certain part of the, the country, um, then Amazon will decide where it's best to send the most, uh, what, what number of objects, uh, items, sorry. and um, and then that way it, it can ensure the best sort of uh, time frame for delivery and all that kinds of things so that it can help maintain its, its status as the superior e-commerce platform in the world right now. Um, it's a really cool model. Um, it's, it's really easy for people to get started. So um, we'll, I'll go through a bunch of pros and cons with it. And then um, at the end of that, we'll just take a quick look inside just so I can sort of run you through a couple of other things. Um, basically, just on the Amazon page, and you're probably already familiar with that, but there may be a few things that you haven't noticed. So um, yeah, with that, let's get into some of the pros. So um, anyone can start. Um, it's, it, it is relatively easy to get started. Um, and I, I might make a video on how to do that uh, soon. Um, it's also relatively low outlay um, compared to a lot of other business models. Um, it's not like drop shipping where you know you don't pay for the product until someone orders. Um, you have to pay for it upfront, and uh, that way you, you, you know, like you sort of you have to uh, buy items in bulk and then ship them. Uh, you, you get a better deal on transport um, and freight anyway by doing that. Um, so obviously, the more items that you can s send, the uh, the better the overall packages, um, generally speaking. Um, and yeah, so like in, in terms of like building most brick and mortar businesses from the ground up, you can get started for you know, like you, you can get started for a few thousand dollars kind of thing. Um, maybe even less, though it is a bit harder. Um, so there's a few. It just depends on what what sort of position that you are in right now. Um, if need be, it might be worth looking at um, trying to generate some revenue before that so you can outlay a little bit more. That way it just means that there, there are some other benefits that you can get uh, by buying a larger um, order. So um, the other good thing about it is there's no need to hold inventory. So um, like if you try to ship from your your home or something like that, or if you're big enough where you need a warehouse or something, then that, that just incurs extra costs, all that kind of thing. So Amazon's just got like land all over the place, um, plenty of room for store. So, um, and they do charge you a fee for that, but that's fine, I think. It's, you know, just a, a cost of doing business. Um, but yeah, it's, it, it's one less thing to sort of worry about. Um, so there is the other model, um, just while I've got you, is the F FBM, which means fulfillment by merchant. And um, that's where you do the same thing with Amazon, but you obviously, you fulfill the orders yourself, um, hold the orders yourself, store them, etc. cetera. Um, and, and it can be run from anywhere. So, you know, I like, because I'm based in Australia, um, as I said before, I was focusing on the US market and I was sourcing products in China. Um, this is going back a few years now. And, um, and, and, and it was great. So I just basically, I bought from the, Bought from the supplier, cut a deal with them, shipped them over to the states. They told me where to send whatever. This is Amazon. Told me where to send uh, whatever quantity, and um, then had orders placed, and then they were shipped, uh, you know, at, at, at the quickest possible pace. So, um, as I said, no need to fulfill orders. Uh, that can be a task in itself. Um, it saves you, you know, packaging and. Um, you know, trips to the post office and all that kind of thing, couriers, etc. cetera. Um, just, again, one less hassle. So you can sort of simplify your model, but you just keep yourself at your computer. And you can, you can like, um, as stated before, you can literally do that from anywhere. Um, and, and it can be done as a side hustle. So you can do this on the side, like at night, you know, in front of the TV sort of thing or whatever, whatever it is you do in the evening. Um, yeah, you can, uh, that, that's how you can, sort of 
keep this as a side hustle. It was something that I used to do when I was working away um, in the mining industry. Uh, I'd be away from the family. Um, not a lot to do there at night other than go to the gym or go to the pub and um, get pissed and talk about work with all the other boys. Um, so yeah, it can be done as a side hustle. It doesn't take a whole lot of time and effort and then um, it, after, after you get it up and running, you can scale it from there. Um, so there are a bunch of other pros, but those are some of the main ones. Um, and these are some of the cons. So f finding products can be a bit of a painstaking process. Um, you have to sift through like your, because there's a bit of a process with how you go about, um, you know, uh, like finding products that, you know, don't have too much competition, but there is a demand for them. Um, and then there's, uh, and then, the other thing too is that you, you don't really have a way to be able to do any quality assurance or quality control because you don't see the products before they get to their destination. You don't know if any of them are damaged or anything like that. And so that can cause problems with you know refunds and reviews and all that sort of thing. And, and the thing about the business is it's so, it's so dependent on reviews and, and um, uh, with moving forward, we're trying to generate some uh, momentum. Um, Although, in saying that though, there are services that uh, people offer where they, they'll provide you with quality assurance and control, and um, they will, but not, you know, for a fee, and um, it, it's something, uh, something that's worth looking at too, especially if you do follow this and you start to get a, a bit of traction and you start to grow. Um, there's a lot of people selling on Amazon, another con. Um, so it's trying to sift through the products and trying to, uh, you know, find those ones that, like as I said before, they do have the demand, but don't have as much competition. Um, and then in saying that too, though, the good thing about competition is it means that there's a demand. People want the product, so um, it might be just a matter of, of, of doing something slightly different, offering a better deal, doing whatever it is that you can to avoid the race to the bottom. You don't want to try and beat everyone on price because eventually you just cut into your margin and there's no point in doing it anymore. Um, so and the, another con about it is with Amazon um, being such a massive, massive company, um, your, your business with FBA is still entirely dependent on Amazon, the platform. So it, it, it wouldn't take much for them to shut you down for something or you know they change like change rules and all sorts of things um, without much notice sometimes. Um, so it's just something to be mindful of. Um, a good thing to do with that is to try and find a way that you can um, keep a list of your customers and try to keep them on an email marketing list so that you've always got that to fall back on should anything ever happen. Um, because if you sell anything where it's you know like a consumable and, it's, and, and you can have satisfy those repeat customers, then that's a good way to sort of protect against any um, adverse effects from uh, some type of shutdown with Amazon. Um, and then another con, uh, Amazon has been known to copy products um, that are doing well on its platform too. So it's, it, it's, it should be, uh, I guess, like it's, um, it should be flattering, you know, if, if you're doing well with your business, but it can't, like, because they can ultimately go, they can copy your product. They've got a whole bunch of, um, you know, gurus behind them um, so they can figure out ways to make it better, market it better, and they can um, also, like, they, they can throttle your uh, listing results as well. So they might plunge you further down the list of bestseller rankings, that kind of thing. Um, if you start to suffer, you'll suffer quickly because it doesn't take lo long to drop. Um, you'll see it in some of the um, Amazon videos, uh, like in, in, in the Amazon video that I do later on. Um, BSR, bestseller ranking. It, it's basically a, a gauge on how well your product is doing in that category, etc. Um, but yeah, so Amazon does do that, and it, it is, it's kind of slack. But you know, that's one of those things where they are they are a business, and um, that's probably one of the ways that they have become one of the you know most valuable companies in the world. Um, so yeah, with that being said, uh, we'll jump inside my computer and we'll just go and have a quick look at the platform and just run through a couple of things and um, yeah, we'll go from there. All right, so here we are inside Amazon.com, the uh, US version as you can see. So um, there's not every product that is sold on Amazon is a good model, uh, is a good product to use for 
um, or every category, sorry, is a good category to use for Amazon FBA. Um, there are some things that you, you just can't sell because they're protected by copyright, etc. But there are a bunch of things, that, uh, a bunch of categories that are available. Um, best way to go is to just choose something that is in your um, area of interest. Um, that way you already have some sort of understanding about the product. And um, yeah, so um, this might have changed now since I last kind of used it. Um, but let's just quickly look at this. So we'll go to our sellers. Um, so like, I think baby can be quite a good, good model to go with. Um, generally when I've done any kind of e-commerce, I've always stuck with electronics. Um, I'm a little bit of a nerd, so that kind of thing is what sort of gets me, um, you know, that, that's what interests me. So, um, yeah, something like that, you know, something like that. that could be an example to look at. Um, let's just click on that and see that goes. So the brand here. Um, so it's obviously done well. It's got a lot of uh, reviews. So this person's probably selling who knows how many of these, especially at a time like now where um, these sorts of things are going to be flying out the door almost as quickly as masks and um, hand sanitizer and I don't know what it's like in the rest of the world, but toilet paper here in Australia whenever we have snap lockdowns, it's ridiculous. Um yeah, and then so these are a list of all the other ones that other people are selling, your competition essentially. Um, it's probably not a product I would choose because there appears to be a lot of people selling something very similar to this. So I'd keep looking. But um, it, it's, it's a good example anyway because, um, yeah, it's just a, a relatively simple, straightforward object. The thing about electronics is there are things that can go wrong with them. So the more basic the product is, generally the better it is because fewer moving parts um, means that it's quite yeah quite easy to um, you know it, it, it's it, it's less easy for something to go wrong with it you know um, so I things back in the past have, that have done well have been things like um, shakers uh, that kind of thing like bottle blender I think was one that was um, released a while back and I'm pretty sure that whoever it was that created that product has done really really well out of it um, things like silicon spatulas and Kitchen and dining, I think, is the category is another good one to look at, especially if you like to cook. Um, yeah, th those sorts of things. Uh, what else would it be like? Maybe, maybe tools and that kind of thing. But um, yeah, generally, so that's those are the sorts of things. If you're going to look at getting into it, it's there are like the, there is a number of things that you need to watch out for when you get into it. But it can be something that you can figure out by yourself. Um, The way that I did it was with a um, with a service or a, a product called um, I can't even, oh, Amazing Selling Machines. So um, I might leave some links to that in the description as well. Um, it is an affiliate link. It was a fantastic course. And going back, like the reason that I didn't continue to pursue it anymore was because of where I was working at the time. Uh, we're doing 12-hour days um, pretty much every day. Um, seven days a week and uh, I was just like rapidly approaching burnout um, I had a couple of things go wrong and this is something to keep in mind too if you do go down this path um, as I mentioned earlier when I went to do some uh, when I went to get reviews I don't even know if they do this anymore but um, there was a service that you you, you could get people to um, review your product and you would get them like a, a $1 um, purchasing coupon so you create a coupon they can buy the product for a dollar they give you a review of it and then you can that way you can start to build up your reviews see like so you can start to get like there's there's like a, a formula for I mean like a, a recommended number of minimum reviews you should have or, or try to aim for just to help sort of boost your results um, and I went in with my stock I'd done this order I only asked for X amount to be done um, X amount of reviews uh, I literally I went to sleep I went to sleep one night um, and the reviews started to come in. When I woke up in the morning, um, 
it had gone well past what I'd arranged for um, the products. I'd nearly been completely cleaned out of stock and all of my products had been shipped. Um, and so that pretty much crashed that business. But it was it was a real shame because it was like I know that it, it was it was going to do it was going to do well. Um, so that kind of put me on on hold for a bit. I wanted to sort of uh, sit back and try and learn a little bit more about it. And then just life life takes you in a different direction. But if it hadn't have been for that one little hiccup, then I probably still would have been selling them now. So just something to keep in mind. But yeah, for sure, uh, check out the links in the description below. Um, let me know what you think if you tried to do FBA in the past or if you're thinking about doing it. Um, and yeah, let's see if we can get you earning some money on Amazon. All right. Thanks, guys. See ya.